Hey guys, check out this next video, fully embedded earring inside the earlobe. I see it a couple times a year, first time on my channel. It's an interesting one and it's huge. Also make sure to check out, I'll link it at the end of this video, sharing a little personal history. I put up the video of the street I grew up on and some stories of um, where I grew up and you get to see kind of where I came from, little Mr. Popsit history. Check it out. Okay guys, Greg Lynch, Sturm PA here, Mr. Popsit. We can see here discoloration on the ear. This is something we see two or three times a year. It's not super common, but it's a foreign body reaction because the back of an earring is stuck in the middle of the ear. This can happen from chronic inflammation, sometimes infection or sensitivity to nickel or whatever is in the ear as far as metal goes. And if we look, we can see in the back, we start to, it can oxidize and you can start to have a reaction that will cause this pigment in the ear. So what we're gonna do is kind of tape the ear back forward a little bit and expose the back of the ear. We're gonna do a little bit of numbing here. You can feel it, you can almost see it when I push on it. Um, it's, it's, they're not deep in here, there's only a couple millimeters thick in the earlobe. So we do a little numbing, we'll pop that right out and then put in one or two small stitches in the back so she barely has any scar that's visible. And then what we hope is once the metal's out, the body will start breaking down some of that, if it's oxidized in there, some of the pigment that can come up from having metal in a foreign body reaction like that. And I would say within a year, hopefully most of that's gonna go away. It shouldn't be like a tattoo staining or anything like that. But we're going to get her all numb and ready to go. And thanks to her for sharing so people can see when they have this just how easy it is to get out. Okay, we have the area anesthetized, the full earlobe there. We have a little bit holding back the hair and just kind of holding the ear. It's right in the middle here. We make just a small two to three millimeter cut on the back of the ear here. We're going to see that pigment. A little bit of scar tissue. And I can already feel the metal right there. What tends to happen with these is you can, um, scar tissue forms around the little piece of metal that's in there. Once I get a hold of it, we just have to trim a little. On the ear, you hear everything, sorry. <laughs> so you're gonna hear just a little bit of metal on metal clicking. That's it right there. So I like to turn it a little just to loosen up a little. It'll start presenting itself. A little bit of scar tissue there. You can see it right by the surface. Is that too high? Let me bring her down a little. We're all on our tiptoes. We don't need to be on our tiptoes. <laughs> there we go. So a little twist. Good size. So what I do here is get the, so it's a tiny bit of connective tissue right here in the front and back. Almost out. I always say I need two right hands. You can dab there. <laughs> go. No pain, right? Good. No. Good, good. There we go. So I remove most of it from the front, the connected, or from the back. And now there's a little bit of front connective tissue. I'm gonna get around the corner here in just a sec. And you can see that nice backing there and the oxidization is oxidized around it. Yeah, I'm gonna have you just kind of squeeze there. Yeah. The longer it's in there, the more scar tissue. A lot of times I'll use scissors just to get right behind it. 
Once I've got the big adhesions there, I'm gonna have you dab just a little. Main thing is no pain, right? Yeah, maybe. You got the front out, right? <laughs> yeah, I did. Good, good. It's just a big backing. It's kind of oh, like okay. a C clamp almost. Yeah. It comes out like that. So I can see the other half circle there. I'm going to have you, if you can, hold that. I know that's a tough angle. Oh, the for butterfly you. ones? Yeah. It's just a little bit of connective tissue right there. Yeah, as far as backings go, this is the Cadillac of backing. <laughs> it's a big one. There it is. Good. I'm gonna have you hold pressure there. Perfect. There we go. Good size backing there. And it kind of looks like, see, just, you can see the scar tissue, connective tissue there. That's like adherent to it right there right in the middle there, very connected. And you can see the metal kind of breaking down a little bit there too. So just one of those kind of double C clamp there. That earring would pull, push through that and then that would be the end and it's kind of breaking down. So it's been in there a little while, but that's good to get out. Nobody wants that anywhere in your body, especially the earlobe. So got that. I'm gonna dab there just to stop that whole flow. So we do get some, you can see that pocket in there kind of closes down on itself. And that heat cautery will cause some contracture in there, which is good. That pocket that that was taken up, we wanna make that smaller. We'll put just two little tiny stitches there. And that's the end, end of that problem. And we'll see here in time, now that's out, that should start too. And we did no scar on the front, which is nice. Very little scar on the back. Two small 6-0 stitches that we'll put in. She'll get those out in seven to 10 days. And then the, the healing starts and the breaking down of the pigment. And we're doing just a simple interrupted there. So obviously in young people, we like to have the best cosmetic result possible. Smallest stitch, smallest scar we can. And you could see it took an extra two minutes to get that out because the opening I made was just about as big as that backing. I didn't want to go any bigger than that if we didn't have to. And that's always good. We'll do a little cut there. Put it down and we'll do one more and we're done. So what we're looking for here is a little tissue eversion. We do want a little puckering up there. Get that little guy there. And out of almost 530 videos, this is the first, I think, earlobe foreign body on there. So you get that distinction. <laughs> the first backing of the earrings taken out. Done several, but this first one that we have recorded. And we'll put just a little padded bandage on there. She can keep on just today. There wasn't any real big bleeders, so. She can take that off tomorrow. Small band-aid if needed. Cut that. Very nice. It already looks less gray. <laughs> so 
So that's good. No big bleeders. And hopefully she'll be able to kind of go through that piercing again um, once this heals and some of that pigment starts to go down, probably in four to six months. I would give it some time before I tried to pierce that again. Mm -hmm. She doesn't keloid, so that's okay. But we really want that to heal completely and absorb some of that um, pigment that's there. So thanks to her for sharing. That's unique foreign body extraction from the earlobe. Um, we've done some foreign body extractions with uh, the spines of a sea urchin. We've done uh, splinters and all that, but that's the first backing of an earring. So always interesting to see. And you can see when we have metal in our skin, um, the body does not like that a lot of times and it's battling it, trying to break it down and it's causing that oxidized um, discoloration. So um, thanks again. Thanks for her for popping by and check it out.